This has been a hell of a bad stretch for the sufferers of TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. Now, the special prosecutor's scathing report about Biden's mental state was bad enough, but just hours before that bombshell dropped, the Supreme Court had wrapped arguments in that Trump ballot eligibility case out of Colorado. Now, you get a sense of how it went by the reaction of so-called experts in constitutional law who had boldly predicted that the 14th Amendment would disqualify Trump. My former students, the Chief Justice and Justice Kagan, saying, isn't it amazing that just one or two states might determine who becomes president? Where have they been all this time? When they studied constitutional law, there was something they learned about the Electoral College. I doubt that they've forgotten about it, but to listen to the argument, you'd think they had. Oh, first of all, the Electoral College has nothing to do with what they were arguing, and he's attacking Elena Kagan. Wow. Trump's made these people not just lose their credibility, they've lost their minds. Joining me now is Saul Weisenberg, former deputy independent counsel, Fox News contributor. Saul, <laughs> who's getting the Constitution wrong here? You know, the whole idea behind using uh, state courts and Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to try to take Trump off the ballot was so ridiculous from the get-go, was such a loser. Uh, uh, you just shake your head and wonder, not that somebody like Tribe would be involved in it, he fell off the deep end long ago, but that Judge Ludig would lend his name to it. Really, well, uh, really amazing and nothing, nothing surprising about yesterday's argument. Now, Saul, I listened to the entire thing. Justice Thomas just hit it out of the park right off the bat. He was the first one to ask a question. Uh, the, the lawyers, you know, representing the, the, what the Colorado Supreme Court's verdict was in this case, that Trump could be ruling, that Trump could be knocked off, uh, off the uh, ballot, basically was trying to, you know, argue facts that weren't actually at play here, and it was just completely schooled. But it looks like this could actually be a very lopsided decision. This could be 8-1. Some people saying it could be 9-0. But at, at some point, it looked like even Sotomayor kind of gave up, saying, OK, Kagan's on that side. I got I to gotta go with the Kagan, Kagan people. Well, you have to be careful about predicting for moral argument. Oh, no, we don't. Time it's since Friday I've night. Heard, uh, it's, it's Friday night. OK, it's been a long time since I've heard uh, oral argument this lopsided, and I think you're right. It's either going to be eight to one uh, or nine zip, and it's going to be on relatively narrow grounds in order that Chief Justice Roberts can get everybody on board. But what I really appreciated about the argument yesterday, Laura, was that, you know, everybody took it seriously, and I was very mm -hmm. proud of the court. They were seriously discussing important constitutional issues. They weren't talking about liberal or conservative or anything like that. I think it, it, it really redounds to the benefit of the court and to the prestige of the court. Yeah, Brett Kavanaugh noted, obviously, that, look, there's a criminal statute on the books for insurrection. That wasn't at play here. And then Justice Alito raised the concern about the potential for, you know, retaliatory action on the part of other states and chaos. Listen to the Colorado attorney and having pretty much zero answer. We've been told that if what Colorado did here is sustained, other states are going to retaliate and they're going to potentially uh, exclude uh, another candidate from the ballot. What about that situation? I don't think that this court should, should take those threats um, too seriously in its resolution of this case. You don't think that's a serious threat? Saul, how serious would that be, and what would that mean for our representative democracy and our presidential elections? Oh, it would be constitutional chaos, and I think that's what concerns all members of the court uh, more than anything else. Even in particular, I thought Justice Jackson, she was also concerned about the officer, is the president even an officer uh, of the United States? And she was pressing uh, uh, you know, Trump's lawyer, why don't you stress that even more? But I do think mm -hmm. the number one issue, if you had to pick the number one issue that's really concerning them, it's that issue you identify, constitutional chaos, if every state can do it their own way. Remember, you're not talking about their own officials. You're talking about state officials throughout the country deciding who gets on the federal ballot. 
Yeah, now uh, Alabama next, and then Texas, and then California, and it just goes on and on. So we had a busy week. Thanks so much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.